Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So today I'm going to be taking a look at uh, BT11 and BT11 uh, offers us lots of new and powerful tools to be able to build and iterate on some new and existing decks. And today's deck I'm going to be taking a look at is going to be a brand new iteration of the Minerva Loop. Now in BT11 we get a whole new set of cards to be able to interact uh, with the Minerva Loop with the other half of it being the interaction she has with Mervamon. And then Merv Mervamon has her own set of interaction, making the deck even better than it was before, but at the end of the day, we're still going to be utilizing the same core loop we have been for quite some time if you're familiar with uh, utilizing the Cerberus Mon Werewolf in combination uh, with uh, the Cerberus Mon to be able to gain lots of memory thanks to our ability to be able to revive and utilize our level 5 Digimon. So with all that said and done, let's just dive right into the deck. Starting off with the Digitama, I'm going to be running four copies of Demi Miramon as the only Digitama. This is just the best Digitama for the deck because of the cycling that it has, allowing us to uh, try to filter our hand and trash at the same time to put it in a particular state, utilizing on deletion abilities as well. Next, on to the rookies, I'm going to be running uh, four copies of Gabumon. So this is the uh, BT2 version of Gabumon, and it's still good for its inheritable ability to do exactly what Demi Merriman is doing, allowing us to try to cycle through our cards as quickly as we possibly can, with its on-delete inheritable to draw us two cards and discard one, again, trying to set our hand in trash in a particular state, so that way we could uh, find the parts and pieces we need and set our, our trash all in one go. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Gazimon. So Gazimon is an anti-meta floodgate, and it's just in the deck to try to slow down the opponent's game plan and uh, progression, just because its uh, ability just shuts off the ability for the opponent to gain memory on anything but their tamer effects. And similarly, I'm also going to be running two copies of Psychmon as the other anti-meta rookie floodgate to stop the opponent from being able to reduce their play costs. So this uh, stops uh, the Digicross mechanic and uh, Death Xmon from, well, being cheaper than he normally would be. And then the last rookie of the deck is going to be four copies of Ignitemon. So Ignitemon is going to be a nice card for the deck to use as another way to try to sacrifice our Digimon. Due to his when attacking ability, we get to delete one of our Digimon to delete one of the opponent's unsuspended Digimon of the same level equal to the Digimon we just deleted. So we don't necessarily care if it actually deletes a Digimon. If it does, cool. If it doesn't, we just want to try to delete our Digimon for some on-delete based synergies. Then on top of that, it has a nice inheritable ability where it's going to be helping us gain memory when we play our Digimon via card effects, which is what we're doing inside of our loop, and it's just a good way to be able to gain more memory and extend some of our combos. Next, on to the champions, I'm going to be running two copies of Ginkakumon Promote. So Ginkakumon Promote is in the deck to try to be as aggressive as we can because he natively has the rush ability. The alternative ways that we have to be able to utilize the card only add to uh, his overall usability. So whether we're digivolving him on top of a level 3, on top of a level 4, or just bringing him back out of our grave, it doesn't necessarily matter. It's just all different ways to be able to gain access to this rush ability to be as aggressive with as we possibly can. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Eismon Scatter Mode. So Eismon Scatter Mode is just one of the best cards to help try to dig and filter through our deck as best as we possibly can because of his on-delete ability doing exactly what we want paired up with Demi Merriman and Gabumon to try to draw cards and discard cards at all at the same time, filtering through our deck so that way we try to find the parts and pieces we need and putting cards into our trash selectively getting our trash to be what it needs to be as well. Next up, I'm going to be running one copy of Eismon. So Eismon is unfortunately limited to one, which is why we're running it only at one. But the situation when it comes up, it's still a very good card to utilize. Just because uh, discarding this card as long as we have a scatter mode in our trash means we get to play him for free, actually. And free value is always good value, especially since we could utilize that extra body to do various different things with. And then the last champion of the deck is going to be four copies of Dark Lizardmon. So Dark Lizardmon is a really fantastic new addition to this deck just because it has a similar ability to what Eismon Scatter Mode is doing with the on delete of drawing us one card and discarding us one card. So it's just at more cycling to combo with our Gabumon and our Demi Merriman when we use it that way. On top of the fact that he has retaliation. So if we want, we could try to control the field by attacking into the opponent's suspension 
suspend a Digimon to be able to delete it alternatively to control their field that way. On top of this being a really good combo piece to use in combination with our Mervamon. Next, on to the level 5s, I'm going to be running 4 copies of Cerberus Mon. So, this is one half to the whole Cerberus package, and the Cerberus package is what's enabling us to be able to loop our Digimon. Cerberus Mon here is the payoff uh, for being a good card to want to delete, because similarly to uh, Dark Lizard Mon and Eyes Mon Scatter Mode, it's helping us cycle through our deck to try to get our hand set up in a particular state, as well as our trash, all in one go, while being the fodder card for our werewolf mode. And speaking of our werewolf mode, next I'm going to be running four copies of Cerberus Mon Werewolf Mode. So this is the key card that's actually enabling the loop to begin with. Just because his on-play ability allows us to delete a Cerberus Mon to gain 9 memory, we're not usually paying 9 memory to be able to play this card. We're usually playing him off of some various card effects, so that allows us to utilize this on-play ability to gain even more memory than we initially started with. Even at worst, if we do just have to hard play him for 9, we're at least gaining the 9 back in case we want to utilize his rush ability to try to be extra aggressive with and close out games. Next, on to the level 6s, I'm going to be running 4 copies of Minerva Mon. So the deck is still named Minerva Loop for a reason, because this is the card that's allowing us to facilitate the loop to be able to bring back our Cerberus Mon and Cerberus Mon Werewolf Mode, so that way we could try to gain as much memory as we possibly can to go into another Minerva Mon or another level 6 if we need, depending on the situation that we're put in and what we're trying to gain out of our combo and all of that memory. So the ability that's allowing us to do that is her on delete ability where as long as the opponent has two or fewer digimon in play which if they're hiding a digimon and raising then they should then she allows us to play either a mervamon or a level five or lower digimon so uh, just the fact that we get their on play abilities is what's enabling us to be able to utilize a werewolf mode's ability to be able to delete our cerberus mon to then gain nine memory even though we only spent like what a couple memory to digivolve into this or use the option where we're still usually netting memory. Then if we need to and we run out of the ability to loop, we still have the possibility to uh, line up a uh, Mervamon to be able to utilize Mervamon to extend some of our plays and utilize her on play ability. But uh, this card also has a ton of other upsides, natively having retaliation, so she has that built-in resilience to where the opponent doesn't want to attack into our Minervamon unless they want their Digimon deleted, and vice versa, we could use our Minervamon to attack into their Digimon to try to delete it that way, with a nice ability that triggers on the opponent's turn whenever they try to hard play Digimon, which is mainly going to be affecting the cross decks to be able to spawn level 4 Digimon, which is still pretty powerful because we have a good slew of level 4 Digimon that we want to use and have access to. And then the last level 6 of the deck is going to be uh, 3 copies of Mervamon. So Mervamon is just the other card we're trying to revive off of Mervamon. She has her own pros and cons on how we could utilize the card just because she does have a Digicross ability with cross-hearted traded Digimon in our trash, which is pretty decent and we're going to be utilizing that with Ignitemon if we ever do, just because that allows us to utilize Ignitemon's inheritable ability with this card because she's also going to be uh, allowing us to be able to uh, bring back Digimon from our trash with her on play and when digivolving ability. So uh, we get to bring back a level 4 or lower purple Digimon to be able to line up some extra bodies to use. Then if we did Digicross it utilizing this card, then we get another Digimon to be able to bring back with this ability, so spawning two bodies off of this one card effect is still pretty decent value, especially since during all turns, uh, all of your Cross Hearts uh, Digimon and uh, your Digimon with Retaliation gain Rush and Blocker, so that way we can choose if we want to be hyper aggressive, which is more often than not what we want to use to try to close out games, or if we need to, in a pinch, still be pretty defensive just because Retaliation Retaliation Blocker is still pretty annoying for a lot of decks and a lot of Digimon to be able to deal with. Next, on to the Tamers, I'm going to be running two copies of Analog Youth. So Analog Youth as the only Tamer is still one of the most important Tamers in the deck, just because it's some cheap cycling with its uh, low play cost and on play ability, allowing us to uh, filter the top three for any Digimon and then trashing the rest is pretty decent, so with a nice upside on its uh, secondary ability that we actually can utilize. Where during all turns, when one of our higher level Digimon with Digivolution sources is deleted, then we get to suspend him, 
get a memory and hatch another egg into an empty space in our raising area, which is just pretty decent extra value because we're trying to delete our Digimon anyway, at least our initial stack. So that way we could try to gain as much of value off of uh, not only just our stack, but a card like this at the same time. Next, on to the option cards, I'm going to be running one copy of Back for Revenge. So, Back for Revenge is just a combo extender, just because uh, it has this nice ability to allow us to give one of our Digimon it on delete ability to essentially replay it for free. We don't get the on play effects, which is a little bit unfortunate, but most of the time, we're going to be using this in combination with our Minervamon, and she doesn't have any on play abilities uh, to begin with, and we're just trying to recycle and reuse her on delete ability over and over again which this card lines up nicely. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Jack Raid. So Jack Raid is basically going to be the hammer spark of the deck to try to enable us to be as efficient with our cards as we possibly can, allowing us to try to play them as best as we possibly can, where for every 10 cards in our trash, we're going to gain one memory. So in the early stages of the game, this card really isn't going to do much, but by the time we're going to set up and want to use our combo, our trash should be nice and full to at least gain one memory. And in the late stages of the game, this card will obviously try to gain us more memory while also having that hammer spark security ability to gain two memory to try to put the opponent off of their own tempo next i'm going to be running four copies of revive from the darkness so this is the most important option card in the whole deck just because it is enabling our loop to begin with in combination with our minervamon and our cerberus mons so its main ability allows us to delete our digimon namely our Minervamon, to be able to play a level 5 or lower Digimon from our trash for free, and we don't get its on play ability. So uh, even though we don't get its on play ability off of this card effect specifically, we're going to be grabbing our Cerberus Mon, then off of our Minervamon's ability, we're going to be grabbing our Werewolf Mode. So off of this one card, we get two bodies, and then we're going to use our Werewolf Mode to be able to delete our Cerberus Mon, and that's enabling us to then be able to gain 9 memory. So off of this little combo, we basically net five memory for utilizing this card and that is the main goal and intended purpose on how we're going to be utilizing this card and to the other cards in our deck. Next, I'm going to be running one copy of Calling from the Darkness. So this is another card like Aizmon that did get limited to one, so I can only run one copy because of how good this card is. So it's allowing us to delete one of our Digimon for a low play cost, so that way we could try to trigger our on-delete abilities that way, and it's allowing us to then return two purple Digimon from our trash to our hand, so that way we could utilize our trash as an extra way to be able to recycle our cards to use them over and over again. The crazy thing about this card is the fact that if we have no Digimon on the field, then we get to utilize this ability to basically just grab two Digimon back from our trash into our hand, which is super powerful. But if we do have any Digimon on the field, then we still have to delete it. But with all of the on-delete abilities that we have and are playing around with, that's not that big of a deal. With this card even being at one, its security ability still adding itself to our hand allows us to try to potentially see it and use it more often than not. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Mist Memory Boost. So, Mist Memory Boost could easily be a, a, a purple memory boost if you really feel like you want to use it, or it could be a grave memory boost. It doesn't necessarily matter. I just like Mist Memory Boost to try to help us set up as quickly and efficiently as we possibly can, just because this is helping feed our hand, replacing itself with that draw one for trashing two cards from our deck. Even though I'm not a huge fan of blindly trashing, purple has plenty of ways to be able to grab back its cards. So so it's not like it's that big of a deal. Then the delay ability uh, when this card goes into the battle area is pretty decent at allowing us to be able to use that extra two memory at a later turn to extend and enhance our combo plays so that way we could try to be as effective and efficient with our cards as we possibly can, similarly to why we're running Jack Raid. And then the last option card of the deck is going to be uh, one copy of Deathclaw as just another card to try to delete our own Digimon while rewarding us for doing that with some good removal towards the opponent's Digimon. And then as far as the overall game plan and gameplay of the deck, the way I built it, it is just trying to do what the loop deck was trying to do in BT10, where we're utilizing our Minervamon, Cerberusmon, Werewolf Mode, Cerberusmon, and uh, Revive from the Darkness to act as our revival and uh, 
memory gaining engine to facilitate us going into a new level five that goes into a new level six that we could then use to again delete our digimon and go into a new level five to go into a new level six and kind of do the loop that way so to kind of like visually show the loop we're going to utilize our server spawn and server spawn world mode these cards want to be in the trash so that way we have access to them uh, for our revival type abilities. So it doesn't necessarily matter what one we have it to use a Digivolving into our Minervamon. We just want our Minervamon on our field. So we're then, let's just say we're at zero memory, going to use it, revive from the darkness, give the opponent four memory, delete our Minervamon. Our Minervamon's ability will allow us uh, to bring back Cerberus Mon Werewolf mode, and our uh, revive from the darkness will be able to bring back Cerberus Mon. From this type of a position, we're going to use a Cerberus Mon Werewolf modes uh, on playability to delete our Cerberus Mon. We're going to do all of the draws and discards uh, required, and that's going to gain us nine memory, so that's going to uh, net us a essentially 5 memory. Then uh, from here, we're going to uh, digivolve into a new Minervamon, and then we could delete the Merv Minervamon with another Revive from the Darkness to uh, go into the combo again to be able to delete this, grab these two back, and then gain 9 memory. So with that amount of memory, we could do a lot of things from this type of position. So uh, a card like uh, Back for Revenge just allows us to bring back the Minervamon, so that way when we delete it, we're going to have the extra Minervamon on our field, which is why it's a pretty good extender and we have cards to help us delete our own cards uh, so that way we could try to trigger their on delete abilities like ignite mana calling from the darkness and death claw then the cards to reward us up for doing this is going to be our analog youth and analog youth is actually pretty good when we do end the combo with our uh, minervamon just because when we delete our uh, minervamon to go into our mervamon our mervamon is going to uh, bring back a uh, level four or lower digimon uh, so we're going to want to try to bring back our Dark Lizardmon, so that way we could gain uh, the Rush ability and be able to aggress with this card. Then if we use the uh, Ignitemon with our uh, Minervamon, we're going to be gaining a memory when we Digicross it, when we play it for free off of our Minervamon. So there's just more ge memory generation that way. And when we Digicross it with our Ignitemon, then we also get to spawn another body with it, so that way we could either spawn another Dark Lizardmon or maybe something like a Ginkakumon to promote, just to, because uh, they're going to gain the rush ability so that way we could try to be as aggressive with them as we possibly can and that's why again our minervamon is also pretty decent just because uh, our uh, minervamon will be able to gain uh, the blocker and rush ability off of our mervamon as well so you can kind of see there's just a lot of intricate plays once you start getting the loop going and you're able to do it but as far as just some other general lines of play to be able to try to help us set up the best uh, that we possibly can that's kind of where a lot of our low level cycling is going to be coming from so that way we could try to uh, use uh, our combo stack of gabumon demi Merimon to be able to do lots of different things with so if we go into our dark lizard bomb then we're going to be uh, drawing four discarding three which is pretty decent amount of uh, cycling already but the card we want to utilize up more often than not is going to be our eyes mon scatter mode so that way we could uh, draw seven and discard four with this type of stack so that way it could try to help set us up while deal damage and chip at the opponent as we possibly can. And uh, that's why a card like Eismon is really good. Just because uh, during all of this we could just get a free Eismon. And that just sets us up to be able to then Digivolve into a server spawn To be able to set us up or just have a server spawn on the field. To be able to do whatever we need to with whether it's cycling or try to extend or enhance our combo plays. Then if we do also bring our Eismon out off of any of our abilities, we could also just Digivolve it for one into a Ginkakumon Promote and basically just pay one for the ability to rush at the opponent. And uh, while we are setting up uh, and trying to uh, dig through our cards, which is also why a card like uh, Mist Memory Boost and Analog Youth are so important for that early turn setup, is also why we want to run some of the Rookie Floodgates to try to stall out the opponent and stop them as best as we possibly can in case we're moving a little bit on the slower side so it's just a very powerful high synergy deck that can do potentially a lot of work and a lot of damage depending on how you build it and uh, how you're going to be running it but it is a slightly harder deck to play in pilot than some of the other decks just because you really have to understand how uh, memory management works and how your combo plays uh, function and what you have access to
And then there's still a lot of customization potential that the deck has, depending on how you want to play it and the type of tech and tools that you want to incorporate based on the meta and environment you're expected to play against. So if you wanted to, we do have some alternative level threes that you could run. You could lean a little bit heavier into the cross, or you could lean a little bit heavier into the retaliation, or you could try to use something generic like Tapermon to be able to try to help with the consistency while being a nice Digimon with an on delete ability, similarly to how you could utilize Electmon for that same style of role to use for its on delete ability when we're deleting our own Digimon by card effects. Then we also have other level 4 Digimon that we could run to try to synergize it with our Mervamon a little bit better. Then we also do have something good and generic like a Demi Devimon to be able to use up for its uh, low evolution cost to try to tempo into our higher stages a little bit faster while utilizing it as a nice blocker as a good card to be able to revive for some good defensive lines of play as well. Then we do have the ability to try to tweak the deck and shift it into a stack based deck so that way we're not hard focused on the loop per se but the loop could still be a part of the deck to try to set up our uh, Mervamon into a Mervamon play. And Blue Merriman, similarly to Lady Devimon, is really good because it has that uh, draw to discard to when we digivolve up into it. Blue Merriman more specifically has that retaliation if you're going for that retaliation synergy on top of a nice inheritable ability to help us gain some memory uh, when we play our Digimon by card effects. Then we do have some other really good level 5 Digimon we can incorporate into the deck as combo enders. So Lusamon Chaos Mode is one of the better ones to try to pop the opponent's pesky Digimon or their tamers. Then the deck does have some other level 6s that we could incorporate. So you could utilize the classic Lilithmon if you're trying to go a little bit more option heavy and incorporate the Lilith loop inside of it. Or you could use something like Nicotogmon as discard fodder to try to help us gain some extra tempo to make our cards a little bit more efficient. Then we also have something like Creepy Mana and the Creepy Loop to think about as a good sub loop in case we can't necessarily find our main loop. Then as a cute underrated uh, spicy tech, you could think about utilizing uh, Shoutmon Cross 5B and uh, Beelzemon. Beelzemon does have an inheritable ability that you can digicross with our Mervamon. On top of this card also being another cross arts to cross with our Mervamon to get more consistency on her ability for that. But it also has a nice uh, ability uh, when we go up into it to be able to try to play our Digimon as well. Then we do have a couple of level 7s that we could think about incorporating into the deck. Death Exmon is a pretty good highlight just because the deck it does want the opponent to have low amounts of Digimon in play to be able to utilize our Minervamon's abilities to the utmost potential. So Death Exmon is a good de-incentivization tool. And then if you want to try to go for a more classic loop style of deck, we also do have uh, Omnimon Swart as a good card to try to help facilitate the looping. Then we do just have a slew of different removal cards and cards to try to help it delete our Digimon so that way we could uh, try to trigger our card effects as often as we possibly can and try to get as much benefit and value off of our cards as well. And as I already stated before, we do have the other memory boosts that we could lean into depending on your style and approach and what you want to try to use the cards for. Then we do have some various other tamers that we could think about running in the deck as well. So Matt is a good memory fixer that's also allowing us to recycle our purple Digimon and options. Then we do have uh, the BT3 uh, version of uh, Mimi as a good way to try to reduce the cost of our options while potentially tax the opponent for utilizing their options. Then if we want a little bit of a discard engine while we're trying to set up and be aggressive with our low level Digimon to set up our loop as best as we possibly can, we do have something like Sora and Mimi that also could potentially gain us some extra memory as well. And then we also could just run something like the starter deck version of Met as a cheap alternative tamer to try to help us gain memory when our Digimon get deleted, which half the time we're doing with our own card effects. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below. And down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link. So when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook. So when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money 
will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zunitsu. So giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there. And I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching. And uh, as always, uh, don't forget to, to like, uh, share, and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next video.